So hi everyone and um, welcome to our GCP Mindset channel. Today we are going to be discussing a very important um, topic that we know that everyone is um, curious about and today we have a very important guest all the way from North Africa, now Serbia, Dr. Chiheb Gretel. Um, hi Chiheb and thanks for accepting my invitation to discuss this topic. We're all very curious about it. And um, yeah, we'll just, before we begin, ask you to introduce yourself briefly and how you got into the world of clinical research. Hello, Carol. Uh, thank you very much for having me today. I'm delighted by your invitation. Uh, regarding uh, my background, I am a medical uh, doctor by education and uh, have uh, joined the clinical uh, research industry uh, maybe 16 years ago. So oh, wow. uh, uh, I began as a CRA, then I had the role uh, of uh, clinical trial manager. And at a certain point, uh, I uh, had uh, made the decision for starting my uh, own uh, business. And we started actually in North Africa, in Tunisia. And after that, we uh, expanded the activities in uh, Algeria and in uh, Morocco. And uh, at a certain time in 2015, uh, it was a crucial time in the life of our organization. We decided uh, to go uh, somewhere in Europe and we examined the opportunities that were offered to us at the time. And we chose to establish in the uh, southeastern Europe an office in Serbia, in the city of Novi Sad. And uh, since that time, uh, we uh, have grown activity for uh, international and local pharma, medical device uh, companies. And uh, we as well ensured some extension of the activities uh, to uh, Hungary because it's neighboring countries and we began as well activities in European Union. But we do have uh, uh, today uh, significant activity in the uh, North African uh, region and uh, extend, extensive uh, collaboration as well with uh, partners on the uh, Middle East as well. Oh, lovely. So what would you say, uh, what qualities would you say uh, makes North Africa attractive for clinical trials? Well, North Africa is attractive in uh, many aspects uh, because uh, there the uh, health uh, system uh, is uh, developed, but not much developed as in European countries. And uh, in uh, some extent, uh, there are for the clinical trials uh, suitable populations. I mean that we can be finding naive patients for uh, many of the indications that are uh, asked for by our uh, partners. The um, level of education of the investigator is as well uh, interesting. Uh, majority of them has uh, been uh, for uh, at least two or three years in uh, Western European countries for uh, the specialization and for having, uh, um, for gaining more skills in their own specialities. So they are uh, aware of the Western standards. And uh, yeah. we actually do have very good uh, doctors in, in North Africa, and they are as well speaking. Uh, uh, many languages, uh, for mainly French and English, so we can be uh, ensuring with them uh, putting on track uh, interesting trials and uh, count on their support for uh, bringing projects uh, to, to success. Very good, very good. And how about the Middle East? Um, how is the Middle East in general um, as a hub for conducting clinical trials? Well, when we began activity uh, in uh, North Africa in uh, the year, uh, as an organization in the year yeah. 2009, uh, Middle East was uh, like a, a region which was sought from the uh, sponsor as being uh, the future of clinical research. 
and uh, in uh, Middle East, uh, countries like uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, uh, Qatar, are uh, having really very advanced uh, health system and they have uh, competent authorities that are at the American standards, let's say. Uh, and uh, that region was looked for as a whole with North Africa as very being very, very promising for clinical trials. And uh, because of the instability that the region has shown, uh, has seen, sorry, uh, during the year uh, 2010 and 2011, all these Arab Spring uh, events, they made uh, um, sponsors reluctant to invest in trials during that, these years, those years, uh, 2011, 12, and until 2016, situation was thought to be politically unstable and region like on the project management uh, approach, not suitable for uh, conducting the uh, projects. But now when we have uh, this uh, site uh, from uh, like now, 10 or 11 years have uh, elapsed. So since that period, we can uh, see that uh, the activity is back to normal and uh, maybe more uh, than uh, when it was before this uh, Arab Spring uh, events. And uh, mar markets like uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Algeria, Morocco, Egypt are uh, thriving markets for pharmaceutical uh, companies and medical device companies. And uh, we are observing a, a surge in the clinical trial activities in parallel uh, to that. Um, so just for those that don't know, the MENA region stands for Middle East and Northern Africa, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And um, did you face any challenges setting up a clinical research organization in the MENA region? Oh, yeah. Actually, when we started the company in 2009, it has been uh, really challenging for beginning this uh, activity uh, since uh, we uh, had uh, only a couple or three companies operating uh, in uh, Tunisia at uh, the time. The whole activity of clinical trials uh, was not under the spotlight. Uh, getting uh, CRAs or uh, young uh, professionals interested in clinical trials was extremely hard. And we got to ensure their training in a house or uh, send them abroad for getting trained. And uh, the regulatory process in uh, North Africa, especially at the time in uh, the country where we started, which is my home country, Tunisia, uh, was uh, uh, not uh, so uh, proactive at the time. Uh, so it was really uh, challenging to, to begin and to thrive and to uh, have operations ongoing. On another aspect, uh, the sponsors as well, they prefer to have uh, uh, partnerships with uh, global CROs uh, that are uh, offering the service uh, of um, conducting trials on a multi-country uh, level and uh, small, medium biotech companies, uh, local companies, they were not uh, able to, to conduct uh, trials and uh, some of them were even not interested in conducting trials and prefer, for example, conducting their phase one trials in other phase one units uh, abroad in Europe. Uh, and uh, it was really uh, not the right climate for starting activities but uh, i am uh, happy with my uh, that we succeeded with with our team and uh, all the collaborators for uh, uh surviving <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah then i can say you made it you know so yeah well done. Yeah. Thanks to the efforts of uh, a young and motivated team. And of course, we have our, our senior uh, uh, counselors uh, and uh, experts, of course, 
And uh, we must admit uh, it's also a conjunction of factors uh, like uh, the regulatory processes has been aligned and reviewed. And now it's much short time for study uh, approvals, uh, like the authorities, the MOH in Algeria, in Tunisia, in Morocco as well. Uh, they understood that they have interests uh, to shorten the uh, approval or review period uh, for the trials for making the country uh, an interesting destination for, for sponsors. So uh, it is for some of the countries like a, a clear objective to make uh, the uh, country uh, a destination, a hub for clinical trials, and uh, they understood that without a clear and uh, expedited uh, review process, this cannot be achieved. Yeah. No, I'm glad you already talked about some of the regulatory settings. So let's talk a little bit about more um, on the competent authorities, ethics committees, and the regulatory timelines. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. In Tunisia, for example, uh, since uh, now uh, three and a half years, uh, meaning in the uh, beginning of 2019, there uh, was established uh, central uh, ethics committees. Before that, uh, it was local ethics committees in the institutions. Uh, now, for example, for having a trial uh, running in uh, multiple centers, you need only one central application and uh, you uh, got the approval for the, the whole uh, country. Uh, and it is, uh, they are having sessions, uh, their meetings are occurring twice uh, a month, uh, which is really reasonable and uh, interesting for the amendments, the reviews, and uh, all the uh, annex uh, services that will, can be required. And uh, for uh, the uh, MOH, the competent authority as well, depending whether it is a trial involving small molecule or biological product or uh, a medical device, the time is uh, variable but cannot be exceeding six weeks to eight weeks if it is, uh, if everything, I mean, if you is, have uh, the requirements are met. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, regarding uh, Tunisia and uh, similar timelines uh, are uh, seeing uh, in uh, the Kingdom of Morocco. Uh, in Algeria, things are uh, as well uh, changing, but we can be, uh, highlighting uh, some uh, uh, bureaucracy, let's say, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, preventing the time, like the requested timelines to be uh, made. You know that in our industry, sponsors all the time are wanting their studies to be approval the day after they submit. Of course, <laughs> this, is, this is not possible, but uh, like a reasonable uh, a reasonable length of the approval process should be uh, met. And uh, I am sure that the Algerian authorities are as well are uh, conscious about uh, the uh, importance of uh, working on the timelines for attracting more uh, studies to Algeria and to the region in general. And is this the same in the Middle East, the yeah. regulatory setting? In the Middle East, we... Uh, well, in the Middle East, uh, things are much more uh, fast forward, if I can say, and regulation uh, is uh, aligned on uh, advanced uh, level regulation, let's say, uh, like timelines are, are much more expedited. Uh, in United Arab Emirates, for example, uh, you can be expecting uh, an approval in the three weeks uh, from ethics committees. And uh, I think it's a question of resources. 
some uh, agencies, maybe in other countries, are understaffed, but uh, in uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in United Arab Emirates, in Egypt, uh, the, um, they have the competi competencies uh, for uh, answering the requests on, in a timely manner, which is very advantageous for the industry. Okay. Seems um, everything is faster than us here. <laughs> Yes, yes, compared to Europe, timelines are really fast and that is maybe not known to many of the sponsors. Yeah. Uh, despite that uh, quality of services and uh, the GCP training of the doctors is, is the same, uh, some uh, sponsors don't think uh, of outsourcing or re relocating their trials in uh, countries having fast approvals. And especially now in the uh, pandemic configuration, the fast track for COVID can be really uh, surprising sometimes. In, your, in United Arab Emirates, they are approving studies 10 days in the uh, review of ethics committees and uh, 48 hours after that you have the final approval from MOH if the protocol so they are really doing fast impressive impressive yeah. so yeah more good things from the MENA region how about the product import um, is it difficult to import products over there well, some uh, efforts must be done uh, with okay. uh, the administrative process of uh, importing uh, IMPs in uh, many uh, of the countries, uh, especially uh, this was really hard years ago, like five, eight years ago, where it was uh, challenging and it was a lot of paperwork. Yeah. Since the adoption of uh, electronic uh, tools for uh, administering the uh, import and uh, it is depending on the uh, willingness of the uh, authorities in uh, the given country for uh, processing these uh, administrative uh, requests. Uh, years ago, it was really very challenging, like eight years ago. It was a lot of paperwork, uh, many weeks uh, of uh, waiting, uh, different calls to the customs uh, and uh, a circuit of activities, which is endless. Now, in the uh, majority of the country, uh, this request can be followed in real time and you can be seeing whether uh, you must be some information provided for the clearance of the IMP and uh, you can be tracking the shipment uh, with the courier and with the administration and things uh, are uh, much more uh, aligned with the Western standards, let's say. 